Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about Bernoulli process, Bernoulli trial, Bernoulli random variable and Bernoulli's distribution. One of the very important distribution in statistics. Why? Because whenever you do some process which has only two outcomes and uh, when you try to model that problem and uh, when you want to study its probability distribution, then it is nothing but the Bernoulli's distribution. Now, what do I mean by two outcome? Like suppose if you're giving a test, you'll be either pass or fail. You, if you're giving a, giving a sample to test some disease, it will be either positive or negative. If you toss a coin, it will be either head or a tail. Or like if you are a, suppose a checking inspector where you check an item. So whether you want to check whether it is a defective item or a non-defective item. So, or it's a binary thing, one, zero, true, false. So any process which has two outcomes, are always important to study okay so that's the you can say the name binomial but well that's not the exact reason we will come to the reason as well but okay just make sure whenever you have a question involving two outcomes think of binomial random variable and the binomial distribution okay so before going towards the deep into this let us first try to see what is binomial process and uh, again let me tell you one thing this is not the new thing that you are studying See, you have already studied discrete random variable so this is a special case of discrete random variable and after studying discrete random variable what did we see we saw uh, we see the concept of probability mass function it is nothing but the probability distribution for the discrete random variable so here also your Bernoulli distribution is nothing but the probability mass function for which random variable for Bernoulli random variable but since this used very widely in real world, that's why we study them separately. Not only this, we are going to study some seven, eight nice, nice distributions, Poisson distribution, then uh, normal distribution and all those things we are going to study. But yeah, today we are going to concentrate on Bernoulli. So what is the Bernoulli's process? So see, whenever we model something, we always need to build some assumptions. Okay, without assumptions, we cannot build a model. So here, these are the four uh, assum uh, assumptions that we are going to assume before going towards the binomial random variable or the distribution. So when you call certain process or an experiment to be a random process. So if it satisfies this four condition, we will call it as a Bernoulli's process. Well, this goes to the uh, mathematician come statistician James Bernoulli. So he was the one who came up with a very nice formula. Okay, so we are going to see that formula. Actually, we will arrive at the formula. Okay, so that will make it more interesting. And uh, we will also try to see some examples. And we will, I will also tell you how to use a table to solve the problem involving such kind of problems. So there is a nice Bernoulli uh, distribution table that we are going to see. And also I will tell you that using software also one can solve such kind of problem. Okay, so pe there people have built, uh, people have written the quotes. So you have to simply enter few values and you get the probability. So that will come later, but first let us try to understand this concept. So the first assumption is the experiment consists of repeated trials. Okay, so suppose you're tossing a coin. So you cost a coin, there is a first trial. You again toss a coin, there is a second trial. You again toss a coin, there is a third trial. You take an item, you check whether it is defective or not. Okay, get to the next box. You pick it and pick up pick up an item check whether that is defective or not. Good, go for the third box. So it consists of repeated trials. Each trial results in an out outcome, which is a success or a failure. Okay, so as I told you, two outcomes. So it's a, it has to be a success or a failure. The probability of success remains constant from trial to trial. Okay, so like if I say, when I'm tossing a coin, if I say, uh, let X be the number of heads, Okay, so X be the random variable for the heads occurring. So you toss a coin. If it's a head, it's a success. If it's a tail, it's a failure. You can toss a coin. Okay, so like this. And the repeated trials are independent. So like outcome of one trial does not affect the next trial. Okay, so like if I'm tossing a coin, now it has head. Now again, I'm tossing a coin. Will the previous outcome affect this trial outcome? No. Okay, so that means the trials are independent. So if you have a process that satisfies these four properties, then those trials are, then such a process is called as independent process. What is Bernoulli trial? You keep on repeating them. So tossing a coin once is one trial. Tossing, tossing a coin twice, second time is a second trial. Tossing a coin third time is a third trial. 
okay so bernoulli process and bernoulli trial now let me take an example to explain you this more clearly and from that example we will arrive at the definition of binomial random variable and the binomial distribution now suppose you are a checking inspector and there is a conveyor belt a box is going through this belt you open a box you take an object and or you take out the product and you see whether it is defective or not okay so if it is defective i will call it as a success because that's what my job is to my job is to see whether to find the defective items okay so if it's a defective fine okay good next box come you can pick up an object okay so like that but now suppose there is in each box there are 20 items so instead of picking up one i've been picking up three items okay so i'll pick up three object from box okay i will check how many are defective again the next box will come so i'm picking up three uh what you can say three products from each boxes okay so i am doing this so that's what my job is so what is my x the number of defective item so when i will call it a success if i am picking up a defective item now i am picking up three objects or three products from one box so what are the possibilities all three are defective 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 non defective defective non defective so i have eight possibilities this is one way to write down the table another way is so from here i am picking up a product either it will be a defective or it will be a non defective let p be the probability of the defective item then 1 minus p will be the probability of non defective item if you don't like p then you can play say you can take let 1 by 4 be the probability of defective item then 3 by 4 will be the probability of non defective item so depending upon you either you can play with the variable p or you can play with specific numbers so this is my first trial now second trial either it will again be a defective or it will be a non defective again here it will be a defective or it will be a non defective tree diagrams are always good to play with because you can visualize and once you can visualize it's always good to play with defective non defective here also defective non defective defective non defective okay so what are the possibilities d d d d d n d n d d n n then n d d is written n d n n n d n n n so you have eight outcomes okay what is my x number of defective item so either it will be zero defective item one defective item two defective item three defective item so you can see it's a discrete random variable now what is the probability of this okay so now okay now here comes a definition a random variable i mean such a random variables are called as a binomial random variable why because we are having two outputs so whenever we have two outputs then whatever the random variables we are having we call such a random variable to be a binomial random variable and when you find this probability distribution if this is my x you find the probability distribution then that probability distribution of that random binomial random variable is called as a binomial distribution okay so binomial distribution is also probability distribution the only thing is we are giving the name binomial okay so that's one thing now question is what is this you can easily find this but we want to derive at a formula okay so now see here we use the notation b small b some people also use capital b whatever b of x that's what i want to find okay now what is probability of suppose zero defective means what i am getting n n n okay that means i am not getting any my success rate is zero that means i am not getting any defective item but what is this this is all the trials are independent right the fourth property so this is p of n p of n into p of n because of the fourth assumption and what is that 1 minus p so let me call 1 minus p as q again writing 1 minus p is uh, bigger so let me write q so this is nothing but q q so this is nothing but my q q what is probability of 1 that means only one defective item so like if you see the probability for one defective item means what so let let us find probability of d n n what what is this p of d into p of n into p of n so p into q square but there are three three times such a case will occur d uh, n n d n d n d n n okay so it is three times p q square so this is nothing but three times p q square again you find p of d d n two defective okay so it will be 3 times p square q and finally it will be a q cube 
sorry p cube so this will be nothing but p cube because what is probability of d d d p into p into p so that is the thing okay now here let us try to find a formula people usually give formula directly but now from here one can easily see what can be the formula okay now see so this is the notation you will see b of x comma or semicolon this b stands for binomial distribution x stands for the number of outcomes like x is 0 1 2 or 3 n is the number of trials you are performing in this case we are doing three trials and p is the probability of success okay and q always denotes the probability of a failure now what is this this is that's the question now see what was b of 0 n was 3 and here it was p that means 0 so answer was what q cube what was b of 1 3 p it was 3 p q square what was b of 2 3 p it was 3 p square q and so on right so here if p and q so you can observe if from the samples from n trials there will be if x is the number of successes then n minus x is the number of failures so this was nothing but p raised to x into q raised to n minus x because like p of n n n it was p of n into p of n into p of n or p of d and d p of d into p of n into p of d so like it probability was always it's independent so you have the powers of p for successes powers of q for the failures so this is what you have everywhere you have the same thing okay now what is the coefficient here it was 1 here it was 3 3 and 1 now if you recall your newton's binomial expansion a plus b raised to n it is a raised to n plus n choose 1 a raised to n minus 1 into b and so on so from there also this word binomial is coming into the picture okay so now here if there are n trials and x number of successes so how many successes will be there n choose x so this is the formula for binomial distribution okay now we can verify you put x equal to 0 n choose 0 or 3 choose 0 is 1 p raised to 0 is 1 q raised to 3 when your x is 1 p q raised to 3 minus 1 so p q square 3 choose 1 is 3 and you get all the answers so this is the formula for binomial distribution does this form a probability i mean does it satisfies both the properties of a probability mass function that means it should be non-negative and sum over all x should be one well you can see that all the terms are positive so the output is this is positive is the summation positive what is the summation in this case if you sum b x n p x is going from 0 to n is this summation 1 yes because what is this this is n choose 0 q raised to n plus n choose 1 p q raised to n minus 1 plus n choose 2 p square q raised to n minus 2 plus n choose n p raised to n but what is this this is nothing but p plus q raised to n but what is your q it is 1 minus p so this is nothing but 1 so 1 raised to n is 1 so the sum of all the probabilities is 1 therefore this satisfies both the condition therefore this is indeed a probability mass function now i think you have got the idea that how the formula is derived now let's go for an example now, here is the question the probability that a patient recovers from covid 19 is 0 0.4 if 15 people are known to have contracted this disease what is the probability that at least 10 will survive okay so what is the probability that x is greater or equal to 10 but what is this this is nothing but 1 minus probability of x is less equal 9 this is what we have seen so this is what 1 minus what was the probab so what is this this is summation i would say r is from 0 to 9 b of x x that means so here i would say r r is going from 0 to 9 n means the number of trials so here i am taking how many so 15 people okay so 15 trials and what is the probability the 0 0.4 that is the probability of success that means they are recovering okay so let me keep this notation x only because we have played with x so here it is x is less equal that means what cumulative so for equal to 9 it was only b9 
15 0 0.4 but we want to add everything now if you see this will be a little bit uh, bigger task to do you can't compute for each and every one which is time consuming that's why a special table is prepared and that is usually given to you in the exams which you can use to solve this kind of problem so now let's try to see that how one can use that table to solve this kind of problems so here is the question so we wanted to find probability of x is less equal 10 but we know that from our earlier lectures that this 1 minus probability of x less than 10 so 1 minus i have to sum up all the binomial terms or binomial distribution terms from 0 to 9 okay now obviously if you put 0 1 2 3 up to 9 it is very time consuming and that's why we are going to refer a table what is that table let's have a look so here is that table this is a binomial probability sum x is going from 0 to r so the extreme left is n n stands for number of trials so you do one number of trial two trial three trial four trial up to five trial and so on now here r is 0 1 2 now because when you do two trials the successes can be zero success one success or two success when you do four trials the successes can be zero one two three four that's what it represents so now suppose when you're having four trials and you want to see add the successes till three then you look over here and here is the probability is given to you probability of success so to be more precise in our case what is our n n is nothing but 15 in our case so you look for n equal to 15 here r is going from 0 to 9 correct and what is the probability of success 0 0.4 so for 9 and 0 0.4 you observe it is 0 0.9662 so here the probability sum is given to you so just see how many sums you want to add and uh, just see what is the probability given to you so in this case it is 0 0.9662 so 1 minus 0 0.9662 is your answer okay now let's go for the second question so this was the question probability that x is taking the value from 3 to 7 so it is probability x less equal 7 minus probability x is less than 3 or less equal to right so what is this this is summation your x is going from 0 to 7 minus summation x is going from 0 to 2 your b x comma 15 comma 0.4 probability b of x comma 15 comma 0.4 so here you see the first seven terms and minus first two so let's go to the table and let's try to find the answers so for first seven like here it is the seven and 0 0.4 so you go for 0 0.4 so here you can see 0 0.7869 minus summation r from x from 0 to 2 okay i have used x here they have given r is okay like now your r is 2 x is from 0 to 2 now when my r is 2 and it is 0 0.4 so 0 0.0271 subtract you get the answer what was the next thing the last question when exactly 4 survive so how do you solve that problem for survival of 4 people so you do probability of x less equal 4 minus probability of x less equal 3 that will give me for exact 4 okay so for less equal uh less equal 4 is nothing but this over 0 0.2173 minus less equal 3 0 0.0905 subtract you get for exactly four people will survive the probability that exactly four people will survive. so that's how one can use the table to find the answer now let's try to see how one can use calculator so just go to google and type binomial distribution calculator once you type binomial distribution calculator you will get plenty of links okay so click whichever link you like so let me go to the first link okay, so if i go to this first link see here you can see the formula that derived just now okay so going to the first link this is what i'm getting now what was our n number of trials it was 15 what was the probability 0 0.4 what was the x like for the first one i think we wanted to find uh at least 10 survive so we did 1 minus probability of x uh, less equal 10 right so i have here less equal thing so what x we will take x less equal 9 so when you do you get 0 0.9662 so you take 7 over here so 0 0.962 and i think that's what we get right for second part it was 
probability of x less equals 7 if you put 7 over here you get the answer minus probability of x less equal 2 if you put 2 over here this is what you get so like this you can use calculator to find the answer okay so even when you go in a company in future if you're working such kind of statistical modeling one always has the calculator or even if you are using any software you simply call that package and it will give you the output so things are pretty much simpler but yeah, it's always good to know what is going on behind the picture so i hope the example is clear to you if uh, yes then do not forget to like share and subscribe and if you have any doubt then you can ask me in the